Thank you, Giancarlo. I, I'd like to make sure that you're seeing my, my screen. Yes. Okay, hello everyone. I want to thank the organizer for inviting me to provide an update of the recent activities dealing with Andes, a prospective regional hydrological initiative for the Andes as part of GWIX, which is co-chaired by René Garro in Chile and myself in Colombia. I also want to thank our team, members of our team in all the countries of the, Ande, of the Andean geography. Okay, so the Andes are the longest cordillera in the world covering more than 7,000 kilometers and running over seven countries, Colombia, Venezuela, Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, Chile, and Argentina. The Andes contain all kinds of ecosystems and life zones, climates and weather patterns from the rainy place on earth in, over the Pacific coast of Colombia to the driest on the Atacama Desert in Chile. And at the same time, the Andes are a very crowded place with more than 50 million people demanding resources, water, energy, shelter, food, among others. Climate and weather in the Andes are controlled by a large suite of uh, atmospheric circulation patterns in and around South America, uh, including the intertropical convergence zone, several low level jets, aerial rivers, mesoscale convective systems, and the dynamics of tropical, subtropical, and extratropical systems causing a great deal of weather patterns and their associated high impact events like floods, droughts, heat waves, frauds with uh, strong socioeconomic and environmental impacts. Uh, and of course, uh, the Andes is connected with the Amazon River Basin. They conform a coupled system because the low lying Amazon exports water vapor to feed rainfall over the Andes and the Andes export river flows, sediments, and nutrients to the low-lying Amazon. So deforestation at both ends is affecting and could collapse the functioning of the whole system, converting the tropical rainforest into a savanna which more dry and hot climate, and putting in peril the supply of water for many cities on the Andes and southeastern South America. The Andes are also connected with the Pacific Ocean by low level jets, atmospheric rivers, and weather patterns that are associated with floods and droughts in, in South America. Uh, also, um, large proportions of the Andes make part of the water and food basket of the continent. Glaciers and the high Andean ecosystems like Paramos, for instance, provide water for many important cities, including Bogota, Quito, Lima, La Paz, as well as for irrigation and agriculture, which sustain food security in the continent. At the same time, intense storms uh, from mesoscale convective systems, uh, summer convection and atmospheric rivers falling down over the steep and populated terrains of the Andes are the perfect recipe for disasters. And of course, uh, as my talk is makes part of reefs, this is very important for us because many other applied issues are associated with this climate and weather patterns in the Andes. For instance, hydropower generation, which is very important in the Andes, of course, ecosystem services, uh, of course, human health. Um, for that plethora of reasons, we are proposing this uh, initiative called Andex. Uh, on the other hand, in, in view of this, it is striking to say the least that there is a generalized lack of monitoring of fundamental hydroclimatic processes along the Andes. For instance, there are only six to seven regular sounding stations in mountains in a mountain range of more than 7,000 kilometers. This is more challenging, as I was saying, owing to the influence of photography in the dynamics of rainfall over the region. For these reasons, we have proposed to establish a regional hydrologic program of GWIX focus on the Andes, on the Andes of, of, of South America. Uh, we had a foundational meeting in Medellin, Colombia on December uh, 2017, where we decided to prepare a white book with the current knowledge and the main research gaps uh, regarding the hydroclimate of the Andes and discuss further steps. That was three years ago. Then we had a in October 2018, we had the first Andex meeting in Santiago de Chile, 
along with the meet meetings of GWIX hydroclimatology panel and in Arch with more than 30 participants. We also have a workshop in Quito, Ecuador in April 2019 to discuss the advance of the chapters of the Anden and XY book. Uh, other activities include oral and poster sessions at the 2019 AGU fall meeting in San Francisco, and also in the virtual meetings of the 2020 and 2021 uh, uh, AGU meetings. Uh, and as a result of these activities, we came up with these three overarching questions to guide the scientific and agenda of, of Andex. First, what are the main physical processes driving the water and energy budgets of, of the Andes at a broad range of spatial and temporal scales and their interactions with the neighboring Pacific and Atlantic oceans and major river basins of South America? Second, how climate change, deforestation and land use change are affecting the hydroclimatological functioning of the Andes across the altitudinal gradients from glaciers to paramos, punas, cloud forests, rainforests, dry forests, and deserts. And third, what is the scientific basis underpinning the sustainable development of the Andean region? And based on that, we have identified four science teams and two cross-cutting teams. First, climate, weather, and hydrologic patterns and drivers. Second, the hydroclimate and environmental land use line changes. Third, the high impact weather events for the Andean cryosphere. And then observations, data and modeling, and science underpinning sustainable development as cross-cutting teams. Uh, regarding the white book, um, we, we also launched the, the Andex web page, which is uh, noticed here. It has been active for the last six months. And it's been of great help to bring visibility to Andex. Uh, and regarding the white book, I should mention that it contains nine chapters and that most, most of them were peer review and published in this special issue of the journal Frontiers in Earth Sciences. Uh, these are the, the chapters of the white book so far. You can download the chapters from this uh, URL from Frontiers and most of them are already published there. Uh, and, and now uh, we have opened the chapters for comments from the broader scientific community. Uh, this is the design of the form to be filled out to include your comments and suggestions. So please go ahead in, and, and contribute to, to this agenda because we want to, to include the broader scientific community in this, in this initiative. And that's the reason why we have uh, uh, put uh, up uh, uh, in, in the Andex uh, webpage this uh, window or this uh, screen to introduce your, your comments to each and every one of the chapters of the book. So please contribute to that initiative, please. Uh, next steps and dead, deadlines, the white book chapters are open for comments by a scientific community, as I said since April 2021, still op open for comments. Uh, then we need to distill the, and synthesize such comments and to, to include and to prepare the implementation plan. Uh, we're, plan we're planning to submit the, the, the implementation plan to GUX uh, as a GUX regional hydrological program in November this year. And then we need to communicate and socialize and examine funding agencies, stakeholders, Inter-American Development Bank and, uh, and other agencies. And we, we're planning to hold an Andex Open Science Conference to launch the implementation plan in early 2022. So that's it for my side. Thank you very much. <laughs>